Well, good morning, everybody. Um, this is from Dilbert by Scott Adams. <laughs> and Dilbert, I love that cartoon. I used to. How to know you are in a mass hysteria bubble. This was posted August 17th, yesterday. History is full of examples of mass hysterias. They happen fairly often. The cool thing about ma the cool thing, <laughs> okay, the cool, <laughs> the cool thing about mass hysterias is that you don't know when you are in one. But sometimes the people who are not experiencing the mass hysteria can recognize when others are experiencing one, if they know what to look for. Okay, and this is what you look for. A mass hysteria happens when the public gets a wrong idea about something that has strong emotional content and triggers cognitive dissonance that is often supported by confirmation bias. In other words, people spontaneously hallucinate a whole new and usually crazy sounding reality and believe they see plenty of evidence for it. The Salem Witch Trials are the best-known example of mass hysteria. The McMartin Preschool Case and the Tulip Bulb Hysteria are others. The dot-com bubble probably qualifies. We might soon learn that the Russian collusion story was mass hysteria in hindsight. The curious lack of solid evidence for Russian collusion is a red flag, but we'll see how that plays out. The most visible mass hysteria of the moment involves the idea that the United States intentionally elected a racist president. If that statement just triggered you, it might mean you are in the mass hysteria bubble. The cool part is that you can't fact check my claim you are hallucinating if you are actually hallucinating. But you can read my description of the signs of mass hysteria and see if you check off the boxes. If you're in the mass hysteria, recognizing you have all the symptoms of hysteria won't help you be aware you are in it. That's not how hallucinations work. Instead, your hallucination will automatically rewrite itself to expel any new data that conflicts with its illusions. But if you are not experiencing mass hysteria, you might be totally confused by the actions of the people who are. They appear to be irrational, <laughs> to say the least, but in ways that are hard to define. You can't tell if they are stupid, unscrupulous, ignorant, mentally ill, emotionally unstable, or what. It just looks frickin' crazy. The reason you can't easily identify what the hell is going on in the country right now is that a, ma a powerful mass hysteria is in play. If you see the signs after I point them out, you're probably not in the hysteria bubble. If you read this and do not see the signs, it probably means you're trapped inside the mass hysteria bubble. So here are some signs of mass hysteria. Now this is my own take on it, but I welcome you to fact check it with, with experts on mass hysteria. Number one, the trigger event for cognitive dissonance. On November 8th of 2016, Half the country learned that everything they believed to be tr both true and obvious turned out to be wrong. The people who thought Trump had no chance of winning were under the impression they were smart people who understood their country and politics and how things work in general. When Trump, when Trump won, they learned they were wrong. They were so very wrong that 
that they reflexively, because this is how all brains work, rewrote the scripts that they were seeing in their minds until it made sense again. The wrong about everything crowd decided that the only way their world made sense, with their egos intact, is that either the Russians helped Trump win, or there are far more racists in the country than they imagined, and he is their king. Those are the seeds of the two mass hysterias we witness today. Trump's supporters experienced no trigger event for cognitive dissonance when Trump won. Their worldview was confirmed by observed events. 2. The ridiculousness of it. One, good, one sign of a good mass hysteria is that it sounds bonkers to anyone who is not experiencing it. Imagine your neighbor telling you he thinks the other neighbor is a witch. Or imagine someone saying the local daycare provider is a satanic temple in disguise. Or imagine someone telling you tulip bulbs are more valuable than gold. Crazy stuff. Now compare that to the idea that our president is a Russian puppet or that the country accidentally <laughs> elected a racist who thinks the KKK and Nazis are fine people. Crazy stuff. If you think those examples don't sound crazy, regardless of the reality, you are probably inside the mass hysteria bubble. 3. The confirmation bias. If you are inside the mass hysteria bubble, you probably interpreted President Trump's initial statement on Charlottesville, which was politically imperfect to say the least, as proof positive. He is a damned racist. If you are outside the mass hysteria bubble, you might have noticed that President Trump never campaigned to be our moral leader. He presented himself as, in his own words, no angel, with a set of skills he offered to use in the public's interest. He was big on law and order and equal justice under the law, but he never offered moral leadership. Ain't that the truth? I don't know. All presidents. You can include all presidents in that. Obama, Bush, all of them. All right? They're not, they're not, they're not dependent on moral leadership. Okay, when the horror in Charlottesville shocked the country, Citizens instinctively look to their president for moral leadership. The president instead provided a generic law and order statement. Under pressure, he later named specific groups and disavowed the racists. He was clearly uncomfortable being our moral lighthouse. That's probably why he never described his moral leadership as an asset when running for office. We observe that he has never been shy about any other skill he brings to the job. So it probably isn't an accident when he avoids mentioning any, any ambitions for moral leadership. If he wanted us to know he would provide that service, I think he would have mentioned it by now. If you already believe if you already believed President Trump is a racist, his weak statement about Charlottesville seems like confirmation. But if you believe he never offered moral leadership, only equal treatment under the law, that's what you saw instead, and you made up your own mind about the morality. The tricky part here is that any interpretation of what happened could be confirmation bias. But ask yourself, which one of these versions sounds less crazy? One, a sitting president who is a branding expert 
thought it would be a good idea to go easy on murderous Nazis as a way to improve his popularity. Or, two, the country elected a racist leader who is winking to the KKK and the white supremacists that they have a free pass to start a race war now. Or, three, a mentally unstable racist clown with con man skills mostly just lying eviscerated the Republican primary field and won the presidency. He keeps doing crazy, impulsive, racist stuff. But for some reason, the economy is going well. Jobs are looking good. Oh, no, they're not. The economy is crashing, and, yeah, if you want, if you want a good job, you got to go apply at McDonald's. So, yeah, jobs are looking good. North Korea blinked. ISIS is on the ropes. And the Supreme Court got a qualified judge. It's all mostly luck. Or four, the guy who didn't offer to be your moral leader didn't offer any moral leadership, just law and order applied equally. His critics cleverly and predictably, predictably framed it as being soft on Nazis. One of those narratives is less crazy sounding than the others. That doesn't mean the less crazy one has to be true. But normal stuff happens far more often than crazy stuff. And critics will, f will frame normal stuff as crazy whenever they get the chance. 4. The Oversized Reaction It would be hard to overreact to a Nazi murder. Or to racists marching in the streets with torches. That stuff demands a strong reaction. But if a publican agrees with you that Nazis are the worst, and you threaten to punch that Republican for not agreeing with you exactly the right way, that might be an oversized reaction. <coughs> Excuse me. Five. The insult without supporting argument. When people have actual reasons for disagreeing with you, they offer those reasons without hesitations. Strangers on social media will cheerfully check your facts, your logic, and your assumptions. But when you start seeing ad hominem attacks that offer no reason at all, that might be a sign that people in the mass hysteria bubble don't understand what is wrong with your point of view, except that it sounds more sensible than their own. For the past two days, I've been disavowing Nazis on Twitter. Not me, the guy who wrote the article. Okay. The most common response from the people who agree with me is that my comic strip sucks and I am ugly. <laughs> also, did this guy, is he the guy who does the cartoon? Huh, I wonder. I wonder if he does the cartoon. Okay. Sorry, side thought. Uh, let's see, oversized reaction. Okay. The mass hysteria signals I described here are not settled science or anything like it. This is only my take on the topic, based on personal observation and years of experience with hypnosis and other forms of persuasion. I present this filter on the situation as the first step in dissolving the mass hysteria. It isn't enough, but more persuasion is coming. If you are outside the mass hysteria bubble, you might see what I am doing in this blog as a valuable public service. If you are inside the mass hysteria bubble, I look like a Nazi collaborator. How do I look to you? All right, everybody. That was a pretty good article. Um, again, brought by Dilbert, Scott Adams. And I want to thank you all for watching. I hope you guys all have a terrific day. Peace.